Tracking the cause of defects and their resolution is crucial in any project, especially in software development. It's not just about fixing issues as they arise, it's about understanding them to prevent future occurrences. Let's dive into the five-step defect management lifecycle, which provides a structured approach to managing defects effectively. First, we have detection and logging. This step is all about identifying who found the defect and what the defect actually is. Imagine a team member discovers a bug in the application. They need to log it with as much detail as possible, what they were doing when it happened, the environment it occurred in, and any error messages they encountered. For instance, if a user reports that a button doesn't work, it's essential to capture the browser they were using, the device, and the specific action that led to the issue. This information is vital for the next steps in the life cycle. Next up is triage and prioritization. Here we assess the severity of the defect. Not all defects are created equal. Some might halt the entire application, while others are minor annoyances. For example, a critical defect that crashes the app needs immediate attention, while a typo in a user interface might be low priority. By categorizing defects based on their impact, teams can allocate resources effectively and ensure that the most pressing issues are addressed first. Now, let's move to diagnosis and root cause analysis, which I like to call the secret step. This is where the real detective work happens. It's not enough to just fix the symptom. We need to understand the underlying cause. For instance, if a feature fails due to a database connection issue, we need to investigate why that connection failed in the first place. Was it a coding error, a server issue, or perhaps a configuration problem? By digging deep, we can prevent the same defect from recurring, saving time and resources in the long run. Then we have fixing and implementation. This is where the magic happens. Once the root cause is identified, the team can develop a permanent solution. Let's say we discovered that the database connection issue was due to a timeout setting that was too low. The fix might involve adjusting that setting and thoroughly testing the application to ensure the issue is resolved. It's essential to document the changes made and the rationale behind them, as this information will be invaluable for future reference. Finally, we arrive at verification and closure. Did it work? After implementing the fix, it's crucial to verify that the defect has been resolved. This often involves regression testing to ensure that the fix didn't introduce new issues. For example, after fixing the database connection, we need to test all functionalities that rely on that connection. Once we confirm everything is functioning as expected, we can close the defect and move on. However, it's important to keep the defect logged for future reference, as it can provide insights for similar issues down the line. By following this five-step defect management lifecycle, teams can not only resolve defects more efficiently, but also enhance the overall quality of their products. Each step builds on the previous one, creating a comprehensive approach to defect management that fosters continuous improvement. In the end, it's about creating a culture where defects are not just seen as problems, but as opportunities to learn and grow.